This is AHL Explains. I'm Anthony Ledford and today I will explain maximum diversification. Today's focus is the Maximum Diversification Portfolio or MDP and as the name suggests this is the portfolio that captures as much diversification as possible. So let's assume we've got a universe of N assets or investments to choose from. I need to have a weight associated with each of these assets and these portfolio weights W1 up to WN I'm going to denote as W underline as a shorthand. The risks or standard deviations associated with each of these assets or investments I'm going to call R1 up to RN and as shorthand I'm going to denote that set as R underline. And the other thing I need is the correlation matrix C that describes the correlation between each pair of assets. And remember, this is a correlation matrix, so it's symmetric. It's got ones down its diagonal, and the off diagonal elements are all the individual correlations between each pair of investments. Now, in order to maximize the diversification, we first need to know how to measure diversification. And we do that using a quantity called the diversification benefit. Uh, diversification benefit is a function of the portfolio weights W and it's defined as the ratio of the portfolio risk for these weights and these risks assuming there is absolutely no diversification which arises when all of the correlations are precisely one and it's that quantity divided by the portfolio risk that arises for the same weights and the same risks but using now the correlation matrix C above. Now before we move on let's just have a look at this structure. There is no mention anywhere of expected returns and that's because the diversification benefit is a function of risks and correlations only or equivalently of covariance. The other thing we can say about the diversification benefit is that for any practical portfolio it should be greater than one because there will always be some diversification within your portfolio. Now maximizing the diversification benefit as a function of the weights W is almost a well-defined optimization problem but not quite and that's because for any value of the diversification benefit there will be multiple portfolios that give the same diversification benefit value. For example, if you were to double the weights in any portfolio, then both the numerator and the denominator in the diversification benefit formula will also double. And so the diversification benefit, the fraction in other words, will remain unchanged. The way to solve this is to focus on one solution, and we do this by adding a constraint. So my optimization problem becomes to maximize the diversification benefit as a function of W subject to a constraint that I'm going to choose to be that the portfolio risk is some constant value, RPF say, and the weights, I'm going to allow them to be unrestricted in sign so they can be positive or negative, so I can allow shorting. Now, I'm only interested in solutions that satisfy the constraint that the portfolio risk evaluated with correlation matrix C is this constant value RPF. Now, I've done that because that's exactly the expression that you find in the denominator of the diversification benefit formula. So where I have that, I can replace it with this constant RPF. Now, since the denominator is constant, in order to maximize the diversification benefit as a function of W, I only need to maximize the numerator in that fraction now, which is the portfolio risk, assuming that all of the correlations are identically equal to one. In other words, it tells you to add up the weighted sum of the risks. So my optimization problem, I can rewrite as this. Now that is exactly the same form problem as we solved in the optimization chapter of AHL Explains, except that the expected returns in the objective function have been replaced with the individual risks. In terms of drawing the picture, we have a red risk ellipse like we had before, but now the sloping line through the origin is a line in the direction of the risks rather than the expected return. 
and the green objective function is of course perpendicular to that sloping line. Now the maximum diversification portfolio arises when each asset's expected return is proportional to the risk. In other words, when each asset has the same Sharpe ratio. In practice, there may be hundreds or even thousands of assets in your investment universe, and portfolio construction in high dimensional cases like this is very challenging. That's true even if we're prepared to ignore expected returns like we do here for constructing the maximum diversification portfolio. There are statistical tools to help you obtain good estimates of correlations and standard deviations, and these include regularization, shrinkage, and robust estimation methods. But the problems don't stop there. For example, in order to avoid putting too much weight on assets that provide good diversification, you may need to add additional constraints. And additionally, you may wish to control liquidity, leverage, turnover, sector allocations, or position limits. All of these complicate the portfolio construction. That's all we've got time for today. I hope you've found this to be an interesting episode and have enjoyed listening to these additional AHL Explains. Thanks very much.